My youngest brother was killed in a car wreck August 17, 1987. October the 18th, 2012, ended her life. Being a teen driver, I noticed many things. It's hard as a parent. The thing about this that I was never able to get past, my little brother who put on his seatbelt just to drive around in the yard. But this one day is the one day that he didn't have on his seatbelt. It's the life-wrenching mistake they made. And you can't take it back. Can't take it back. Can't take it back. Hello, Vicksburg. My name is Cassandra Reed and I am the director of the ARL Project. What is the ARL Project? The ARL Project is a program designed to inspire, motivate, and educate our teen drivers on seatbelt safety by partnering with city, community, and state agencies to educate them to make pro-life decisions on wearing their seat belts and driving and arriving home safely. And the reason I started this organization was because in the school year of 2012 through 13, we lost six students to vehicle fatalities. One of those students was my daughter, Acacia Lee. Acacia. This year would have been the year that she had longed for her entire life. She would be a senior. She would have attended her senior prom. She would have been a debutante participant. She would be graduating. She would have already selected her college. She would have celebrated her 18th birthday. But on October the 18th, 2012, Acacia chose not to wear her seatbelt. The choice ended her life. Acacia was a fun-loving, vibrant, laughing, always laughing, always tickled to death people person. She was in everything and was always at somebody's church. And I think my greatest strength was my faith because I could not have done this without having the faith that I do trust in and I believe in and I live by. The scariest moment for me was walking down the steps of the funeral home to identify my daughter's body. My name is Robert Lee. Uh, Kaja Lee is my baby girl. Uh, she was 16 years of age when we lost her. Matter of fact, that Tuesday, uh, before the accident happened, I spoke with my daughter while I was out working. I did, I told her I love her and all and be safe, you know, and always wear your seatbelt. That was one of the things I told her on that Tuesday uh, when it's happened. You hear people talking about seatbelt safety and you, you, you don't put yourself into it uh, as much as you do now until it happened to one of your own. And then you realize how important seatbelt safety is and you wish, uh, once this thing has happened, you wish you could have done more uh, uh, with the seatbelt safety before now. You want to make sure that your kids understand how important that is, but sometimes kids think that just a matter of second it doesn't matter, but to the parents out there, uh, that is something you really have to drive into your kids no matter. As soon as you leave your driveway, get in your car, that should be the first thing to do is buck your seatbelt up. I need the message to be given that seatbelts do save lives. As parents, we have to take a stand. During Mayor Flagg's campaign, he stated that a change had to come. A change does have to come. Well, I like to use my own self as an example when it comes to the importance of wearing your seatbelt. Uh, I can remember like it was yesterday, one February, I was driving down 220. My vehicle flipped a couple of times and uh, I spun around in the highway and, 
and uh, I was able to walk out on the passenger side and I never will forget it. The police officer was about an hour late coming to the accident. She said that I apologize for being late, but uh, I know you've already transferred the injured person to the hospital. And I said to her, no, I was driving. It was only me in the vehicle. And I really believe that uh, besides God, uh, the seatbelt saved my life. We have to be proactive with our seatbelt laws, our seatbelt regulations. Not wearing your seatbelt is against the law. Let's make that change and be proactive on seatbelt safety. We're at Warren Central High School today and we're doing a seatbelt survey. Okay, today I have Kay Broadwick from Mississippi Safety Services and I have Miss Arlene Smith who is our sponsor teacher here at Warren Central for the Seatbelt Awareness Safety Grant that we've received from State Farm. And I also have Ms. Taylor Lee, who is Ms. Team Vicksburg. Okay, here they come. We're standing outside as the students are dismissed from classes, and we're checking the cars to see if the student and the driver have on their seatbelts. Nope. So far, my survey is we have um, about, on my side of the house, we have like a 80-20, and that's 80 not with seat belts on. So that means that my work has only just begun. My youngest brother was killed in a car wreck August 17th. 1987. He was so proud. It was his first car. He had never owned a car. She said he had this most beautiful smile on his face like, and the next thing she know, they hit the 18 wheel. Once the car hit the truck, the truck drug it down and it stopped. The truck driver cut his girlfriend out of the car. And just as he drug her away, the car blew up. And the only thing that I found that belonged to my brother was a frame from his sunglasses. All of this part had been burned out. And we also found like the vent from his air conditioner unit. And that's all I had left. Other than my memories and my love for my brother, that was what I was left with. And that's why this is important to me and that's why I decided that when Cassandra's gonna do something at our school to help our children, it's my place to be there because they're my children too. I've continued to ask the question as to whether I gave occasion enough information on seatbelt versus texting and phoning and driving. And I can't answer that question because I equipped her with all the information that I had to include the resources that I had. I did all the necessary things that I thought I needed to do as a parent. And then the one thing or the one mistake that she made was not wearing her seatbelt the morning of October 18th. You think, well, I'm just gonna run down the road. I'm not gonna put my seatbelt on or I'm not going very fast. He hit a curve and lost control of his vehicle. He had a 2001 Tahoe. And um, once he lost control, the Tahoe flipped. It threw him out of the vehicle and then it landed on top of him. Cannon Lampkin was a sophomore at Warren Central and he was my son. Cannon had um, gone hunting that day and he had came home and decided and asked could he go out over to a friend's house. Maybe he was having a bonfire. Um, the friend actually lived down the road from us off of Warrior's Trail, and so we gave him permission to go. Um, he left the house about 6.15 that night, and I guess around 10 minutes after 11, Martin Pace came to our front door, and he knocked on the door. Um, didn't think anything about the, somebody knocking on the front door because Cannon was supposed to have been home at 11, and it wouldn't have been the first time that his younger brother had locked him out of the house. 
forgetting or, you know, because one thing my, my middle son Taylor would do is always go through the house and lock the doors. So it wasn't uncommon for Cannon to knock on the door to be let in. Kind of surprised though when we saw Martin Pay standing there and I can remember him asking us if Cannon drove like a green Explorer or green Tahoe or something. And it's like, no, his Tahoe's blue. That's not him. And he went to telling us about the accident and there was people in, with him in the vehicle and stuff. And after a few minutes, he finally told us that um, the accident didn't end well for Cannon. When I saw on my caller ID of my cell phone, the Sheriff's Department at the time of day that it was, I knew, oh no, here we go again. I will have to say that last year was the most devastating uh, year uh, of my career. It pretty much traumatized our whole school. He was a very genuine person. Uh, a lot of people always called him and said that he had an old soul. I mean, he would do. <laughs> he would do what he could for his friends and for the people that, you know, he cared about. You know, Cannon was very, um, he was very active in our baseball program. Me being a former baseball coach, it, it, it was very tough dealing with that. And, um, you know, just seeing him out there and interact with all those kids and, and then to lose someone like that. And then Aaron, um, you know, was involved in our choir, I mean, all these kids were, were so special in their own way and meant so much to me that um, I, mean, I sat outside on the patio and just cried. Um, it's just devastating. And I want the parents to know that regardless of what happens, as long as I'm here, I will never forget their children kids at Warren Central High School will never forget their children. You know, you kind of, you do wonder, what if, you know, if you could go back 30 minutes prior and just be that little something in his mind reminding him, put your seatbelt on, put your seatbelt on. They don't understand the repercussions that can occur from an accident if they don't have their seatbelt on. No matter if you're running down the road to get the mail, or if you're just, I'm just going to a friend's house for just a few seconds, put your seatbelt on. I would want another parent to be standing in these shoes. It's not worth it. You know, I know when Acacia passed, she was only going 30 miles an hour, and people said, oh, 30 miles an hour. You know, grandma's passed you on the highway at that. But that seat belt is there for a reason. It's made to save your life. And I, I used to be a big advocate of not wearing your seat belt. But I don't think that I have to worry about anyone in my family, especially his younger brother and sister, never going without their seat belt. They realize how important or what a difference that could have made. But I'm a firm believer now, and I was bad about it. I'm telling you, up until last year, it was about a 50-50 shot for me. I'd wear it or I wouldn't. But every time I get in my car, my kids, my two boys, they will not let me put the car in reverse without them saying, buckle up, daddy, 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 buckle up. And they remind one another, and it's become something that's very passionate for my family is to make sure that we're buckled in those seatbelts. Being issued a driver's license and thereby given the authority to drive is a privilege that many teenagers will be granted in months and years to come. But as parents, we need to make our children aware that driving is a learned skill and not just a tested and passed skill. I refuse to let any of those children's lives be in vain and another one slip away because I sat in the darkness of my own self-pity 
and did not use my voice to express how desperately and urgently we need to make sure our children are cognizant of their responsibility when it comes to driving. The importance of it is driving safety and seatbelt makes a difference and at the time you leave your drive where well, your seatbelt should be on so it's, it's helped me a whole lot uh, with the ALR project and anything they ask me to do I'll be willing to do it help them out. Um, I commend Cassandra and all of her efforts that, that she has you know put forth the time and she's done the research I mean I think that is a wonderful project she very well could have just been done and said you know I'm through I, I can't do this but she took it upon herself to you know want to do something better she didn't want to wallow in her grief she wanted to but make it productive so you can't tell me that God's not in control of this because on a very sad day something good came out of it Occasion. Occasion. This is real important to me because of occasion. I held her when she was a, a little bitty preemie. Occasion was a little different. Uh, she was the persistent one. She was so adamant about starting a dance program here. And, you know, I told her, you know, at first I was trying to put her off and you know, she would say, well, you know, what what do I need to do, Mr. Creel? I said, well, you need 50 names, first of all. She came back two periods later and she said, well, here you go. I said, well, now you need a sponsor. And then I told her that her sponsor she originally had, that's not gonna work. And so she went out and found another sponsor. She kept on and on and on until she made it work, until we could get things started. And then she ended up passing. And it just, it made me completely numb. You know, it's hard as a parent or as a sister, it's hard as a family member to try to right the one wrong that they did. And occasion, getting in the car and riding around in Bovina with the seatbelt on, Cannon Lampkin, good child, mm -hmm. good student. You know, they weren't doing anything wrong, they weren't being mischievous or, you know, disruptive. They were just boys, being boys. Aaron Brown, leaving work, you know, a student that's working. But the mistake they made was not putting on their seat belts. The one mistake, the one time that they don't buckle up mm -hmm. is the time. It's the life-wrenching mistake that they made. I feel like all teens should hear this message because as teenagers we feel that we're invincible. It's kind of a syndrome that all teenagers have. They think that it's not going to happen to them, but that's exactly who it happens to. Anything that we can do through Mississippi Safety Services, State Farm, Acacia Rochelle Lee Project, Fly High, it is necessary and we need to do it now. I made a pact with myself not to do those things. I made sure that all of my passengers felt very safe in the car with me and felt like they wouldn't have to feel uncomfortable about asking me, oh, will you put your seatbelt on or things like that. I made sure I always had my seatbelt on. I made sure I never texted or looked at my phone while driving. So I'm working around town and helping with things like the seatbelt checks to ensure that teenage safety and adult safety is spread throughout the town. And I want to make sure that all people drive safely to make the roads of America safer. Vicksburg. We've lost too many young lives. For simply not buckling their seatbelt. A change has to come. If it saved my life, it will save your life. I'm Jamie Creel. This is Cassandra Reed. This is Lori Lampkin. I'm George Flagg. And I'm saying, buckle, buckle up. up.